Right, it's just going over my old electrics. This one, I used a different one last year. This one actually I thought had stopped working, but I've taken it apart and it seems to be fine. Now normally I put this on the seat underneath here, so there's no chance of it getting wet. And um, you just put your hand under and hit the buttons for turning on your sounder power or your override switch for the pump, that kind of thing. Now the way I've got it wired, you see it's a bit of a, looks quite interesting there. Um, is this wire goes into a live I know it's an earth thing but I, I wanted to use the thickest wires I had so this goes into a, a block which has got live power to it which goes directly to the battery and then each one of these wires goes to another or to a little set of blocks where we just wire in um, pumps sound as that kind of thing and basically you just turn it on and off like that so when I finished at the end of the day with the sounders I turn that off so it shuts off all the power to the sounders and like that that would switch say the override on the pump get rid of any excess water and that one I mean you could have it for the light I'll have a separate switch for the light but for the little light on the boat or like I say one for the GPS one for the fish finder one for the pump that kind of thing and it's just all greased the terminals and it's closed up and like I said goes up under the seat so no water can actually get at it and uh, like I say when your hand goes under if your hand's wet or damp uh, if you get any moisture on the switches obviously it comes down it's not gonna sort of siphon back into the electric anyway and this has been on the boat for well this was on for two years and it's still perfectly fine so question is whereabouts am I gonna put it normally I put it sort of just up in here somewhere because there will be a battery on the bottom so it's the best place for it I and mean, you could have it around the side you could have it on the back but it's just getting to it like I said it's much easier just to put your hand on the hit switches and you get to know which switch is where so um so am I going to put the switches on the left or the right let me think about this the battery's going to go to the right probably I mean I suppose the switches could really just go up here as long as everything's long enough to reach everything that's plenty long enough, that's long enough. The pump is going to go to the right anyway. Now I was going to put back in my wires that I used last time. I just noticed one of these wires has got a cut in it there, that is corroding. So that's no good. Um, I might better get away with shortening them. But I think I can. In fact, I could use the the green one. I don't need to use. Well, I do actually because it's crimped. Yeah, I'll have to cut this back. Bit of a pain, but that's what happens sometimes. Okay, the wire was perfect underneath. You see there, they're not tin. They're just copper ones. They work fine as long as you keep them dry. Um, yeah, it was just corrosion surface corrosion so we're good to go again would have been a pain if I had to change these I only made these up last year anyway so now in the new box they shouldn't get wet at all right let's take a look at the um, electrics so you've got a wire which comes down here this is the charging from the battery. This is a six volt trickle charge that comes down from the battery when it's running, uh, from the engine when it's running. Which then, when connected, will go down this line here to here, which these two are connected to the battery, positive, negative. And then in here, from the battery, you'll see that you've got wires here. These wires will go up to these two blocks. This is negative, this is positive or the live, obviously blue, brown. Now I know this is yellow because I'm going to get a few comments on that probably but this is the main power, that's why it's got a red tag on it, which goes into these switches here. And these switches all come out one line for each switch, three of them here, which are all going to be live and 
basically this is the live power that goes to pumps, lights, sounders, that kind of thing. Three of them. I've got the GPS, the sounder, uh, the override for the the uh, bilge pump, and I'll have a separate switch for the deck light. It won't be on here. Just be a small switch in the corner. And basically, you wire it up. So when you put these on, it'll turn power onto the sounders, or it'll switch the pump on. But it'll isolate them. Every day I turn these off to isolate the power. And that's pretty much it, really. There's not much to it. Now, obviously, I've got the sounders and things and fuses. You can put fuses on you want. I basically I had fuses on 20 years ago. The trouble with fuses, they always go rotten. The first things to go rotten, like the the holders and that, and you get problems with them connecting and stuff. And 20 years ago, I ripped off the fuse and I've been using it without. But you've got to remember, I've got a setup which has got, like I say, a 6 volt trickle charge from an outboard. I've got a 12 volt battery. It's not a big battery, it's just an old car battery. Usually, it's an old, really is an old car battery. Then I pulled out of a car, pulled out my car, and replaced my car battery. And so it's not the best of batteries, but it does the trick. And I'm only running a pump and some sounders, so. Yeah, but if you're running anything heavy or big charging systems, put fuses on. I obviously will leave this fuse on the new machine, obviously for warranties and stuff like that. Um, but once it goes rotten within a year or two, I'll just cut it off and go straight. Well, I'll wire it direct, like that one. Right, that's pretty much it. Like I say, I've just got to put all the wires together and we're good to go. Like I say, I'm just patching the bare fiberglass areas, then we'll paint over it all with a bit of sand in the paint. This one I've got to do, but I've run out of this. Need a bit more for the back. Putting a lot in because I want this to go off fast. Or faster. The gel coat does take a while to go off compared to normal resins. So what's the secret ingredient? A little bit of sand. Just literally gonna flick a little bit on. We'll stick to the gel coat and when we paint over it, you'll have your non-stick surface. You don't need much. Like I say, anything that's not a shiny surface. Obviously you could put it in the mixture, but you end up using a lot more of the mixture because obviously it's coating all the things. It probably is a better way to mix it, but that's fine like this because we are gonna paint over it. As long as it sticks to it a little bit. And when we paint, but it's, this is really fine stuff, so it'll literally just sink into the little bit of gel we've got down here anyway. There you go, that's all you need. And like I said, we'll add a bit more in the paint when we paint. This is um, this is just wax, basically stained wax, wood wax. Goes on. I've put a bit of floor wax into it to soften it, and then it goes really, really hard. And then afterwards, I'll go over with a clear coat of floor wax again, and it'll harden up. And I just do this every year rather than trying to varnish it because the varnish, when a working boat gets chipped, water gets underneath it, starts to flake, then it's terrible trying to clear it off. So. This is the best way I've found for doing what I do. And as you can see, we we did the box as well. So I'm just doing this bit for now, because I was doing the lower sides all the way up there, you see. 
Um, I'll do the top tomorrow because I'll pull the cover off tomorrow. There you go, all's done. Gunnels have been stained. Almost there. <laughs> 